Welcome to Grace on Fire. Supporting one another in bravely creating with wild abandon that which sets our hearts on fire. And I am so honored and privileged to interview a very astounding woman, leader in the community. Her name is Allie Benjamin. She is a minister. She is the director and founder of the Satya Center for Spiritual Living in Ogden, correct? And she is a co-creator of Spiritual Community. This is a fascinating woman, and we are going to need a few months to go through all the talents and gifts this woman has within her. But we have about 15 minutes, 15 to 20. So let's all give Allie Benjamin a warm and gracious welcome. Beautiful Allie, I'd like to ask you a few questions. And the first question is, what inspired you to become a science of mind minister? Well, thank you. And um, thank you for inviting me to be here and to be in this beautiful setting. Um, it's a glorious day and I'm re I really feel blessed to be here. So thank you. Speak up. Yes. Um, well, what inspired me to become a minister Gosh, I think I've been seeking answers my whole life. I wo I, from my earliest memories, I have felt like I didn't fit in. Um, and so I was very inquisitive. I was an inquisitive child and, and my mother asked me, said to me once when I had a hundred questions, you know, you think too much. So that really closed me down from asking uh, questions in my family, but I was I was always intrigued as to what what life was all about, and um, I couldn't I couldn't find the answers. So I began studying. Um, I started in earnest studying science of mind and uh, different religions, and reading a lot of uh, self improvement, self empowerment books when I was in my twenties, and started to study to be a science of mind or a religious science practitioner uh, when I was in my early 30s. And one thing led to the next and I took all the training through the religious science, the Church of Religious Science, now Centers for Spiritual Living, and became a practitioner. That was in um, 01. And one thing led to, the, to another and I decided to become a minister. Um, and I think it was all inspired from that, those early days of me wanting to figure out what this life was all about, how I fit in, and, um, and so I found answers along the way, and I'm still finding answers, and um, I guess that's what's, that, what, that is what inspired me to become a minister, and it keeps growing, and I'm a fairly introverted person, so it wasn't an easy thing to do but I felt like I had to do it. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Allie. How brave of you to step up and have that spiritual yearning from a very, very young age, your entire life. You have been a seeker and this, that's, that's huge because there, you are rooted in that spirituality from the, the moment you landed in birth on this planet and you have embodied that in a powerful way with everything that you bring to the world and your presence just meet her and talk to her a few minutes she embodies this she embodies this spiritual power and energy inside of you and and transmits that as you just live your life and you are the founder and the director of the satya center in Ogden, and that's powerful. You founded this this powerful center that a lot of us here have gone to and, and enjoyed. It's here in this community, and I'm wondering, you know, how that came to be for you as the founder. Well, I I moved here from Southern California 13 years ago, and I, I moved to Ogden, and there was no spiritual community there. And or no Science of Mind Church or Unity Church or New Thought Movement there as, that I could find. And um, so it really started with uh, a Science of Mind discussion group. 
and um, people started coming and someone just said, well, why don't we do a start a church? And I thought, well, why don't we? And so I founded the Sati Center for Spiritual Living in 09 in Ogden. And we've been going ever since. Um, really, it was just an evolution for me. It seemed like the next step. And it was no grand idea of mine. It was as though the universe just prompted me and it all fell into place. And it seems like that's how things happen when your heart's open and you're living in gratitude and life just unfolds in a natural and easy way and that's how it's been for me. Um, it hasn't always been easy but it seems like the right thing to be doing and so yeah founded the the Satya Center for Spiritual Living. It's a um, basically it's a um, science of mind teaching we teach to become science of mind uh, practitioners there. And, um, but so much more. We embrace all positive teachings. And actually, at the beginning of our Sunday services, we do a ceremony called Lighting the Flames of Faith. And we light a candle for all the um, faith traditions. Mm. Most of the, you know, the most common, popular, um, well-known faith traditions. And so we truly are loving and all-inclusive, and um, that's part of our mission statement. Well, thank you, Allie. And, you know, it, it takes a really brave, courageous, and powerful soul to step up and create a community like that. You, you had the promptings, and it seemed like the next thing to do, but taking those actions and being a leader that you are that's not easy, and like you say, it's not an easy thing, but it was the thing to do, and it takes a certain character, a certain strength of character that, that we all see in you, Allie. All, everyone who knows and loves you, we see that strength of character to step up and be a leader like that and create a powerful center like that. Is there anything else you can share with us that the Satya Center offers us? Well, we offer a Sunday service every Sunday, um, we have, we probably have around 75 members. We probably have about 120 or so people that come through our doors every week. They don't all come to Sunday. Uh, we offer a Diksha circle, a oneness blessing surf circle, um, each week. And we offer a Course in Miracles group that meets each week. Uh, we teach classes. We currently have one on conscious aging um, from the IONS Institute, Institute of Noetic Sciences. And I have an associate minister, Reverend Lyle Roll, and um, we both teach accredited courses through Emerson Theological Institute. And so we have a lot going on. We also do a lot of good in the community. We just did a yard sale. Um, we offer a lot of great things. I know that you're going to be asking me about the Ohm Festival in a minute, and that's where my mind keeps going. Um, we have a lot of outreach programs. Um, we have a lot of people in need. So we, we are very active in the community um, with, with our prayer work. We have a very strong team of science of mind practitioners who support our community. We have a very young community. Um, I'd say our, our medium age is 35, which is uncommon. I come from the church I came from, from Southern California. The average age there was about 75. So this is, it's unusual for me to have a, to be a part of a community of such young people. Um, we offer a really wonderful youth program uh, called the In Power Youth Program. And so we, we've got, I think, 15 young ones, young children and teenagers that we care for. And we help inspire them to do community work and, and to do community projects. Um, and we're very involved in art. We offer art and soul play shops where we combine spirituality, meditation, visioning, and painting. And find that to be a 
a wonderful way to experience awakening through the creative medium. Wow, thank you, Allie. That, you are bringing a lot to the community with your center that you founded. The needy, the children, the spiritual seekers, and there was nothing in your area before you came and created this center. So how, what a powerful impact you are making in the world and in your community by bringing your center, creating it, founding it, birthing it, n nourishing it through your love and your power and your awakened gifts and talents. And we're going to go into some of that later. But let's, let's talk about the Ohm Fest. I've been to the Ohm Fest. Yay, a lot of us here have been to the Ohm Fest. And it's, it's the third annual this year, correct? You, you have them each year, this year, third annual. And they're powerful. I, I loved, I was there all weekend. I camped all weekend. We had the time for our life. It was one of my favorite weekends of the whole summer last year. It was so fun. Just the music. I won't give away too much. I'd like you to tell everybody about the third annual Ohm Fest, your Ohm Fest that you've created. Could you tell us about that? So the Ohm Fest is a oneness festival, and it came to me because I heard lots of, of my friends were going to the Bhakti Fest and other music festivals out of the area, and I thought, well, we've got so much talent musically in this area that I would love to have our own little Bhakti Fest in Ogden. And so I was speaking to my friend Lorraine, I, so I know all of you know Lorraine Hortzmanshoff, and I said, well, maybe we should do the Ogden Ohm Fest. That sounds, you know, right, it, it flows nicely. And so Lorraine and I uh, had the first annual Ohm Fest uh, two, three years ago, and um, it's evolved since that first one was very small, just about 50 people came. To last year, we had... Uh, we moved the venue to outside, and we met at Fort Buenaventura um, and had a three-day festival. And Fort Buenaventura is a beautiful jewel in the middle of Ogden. It's a, it's a county park. There's a lake. There's camping. You'd never know that you were in the city. It's just truly an amazing space. And the Ogden Ohm Fest is yoga, dance, music, a youth, the In Power Youth Camp, um, all kinds of activities go on. Um, so this year, we've got four stages. We'll have uh, kirtan and yoga and dance classes. We'll have a lot of the artists from Salt Lake, like Chad Davis will be there doing the sound bath, and Dallas Brown, um, Copo, Magic, and Lorraine, and the Maka Mamas. I don't know if you've heard their new um, songs. And a lot of the Ogden artists, some of the lesser known artists, we really want to give everyone an opportunity to express their gifts and talents, um, to create, to help co-create uh, peace and joy and laughter and creativity on the planet. Uh, so we'll have vendors. Um, I think we've got 40 vendors already. Um, so in the evenings, we'll have music to dance and move to. Um, in the daytime, there'll be yoga and classes and workshops. We'll, we have several teachers that will be teaching. And, um, and then in the evening, it will just be dance and fun. And then there's after hours. We attract a lot of younger people. So there's, I don't know exactly what goes on after hours. I go to bed, but um, there's camping and there's partying and there's fire dancing and all kinds of you were there so I'm sure you know what was going on um, and then on Sunday morning on the 21st we're actually going to do a service uh, one of our Sunday celebrations so we have Lorraine playing um, there'll be a couple of people speaking we'll do a big huge um, prayer wheel mandala that that's made up of humans and so um, that will be a co-creation and a real um, transmission of peace. We also have a Healing Hearts Village there where we will have space for healing artists to um, share their gifts. We'll have Reiki practitioners come together and do an offering um, and share Reiki. We'll have a, a, the Diksha community there that's represented by some of you here. I can see you. 
And so there'll be oneness blessing um, throughout the, the entire uh, weekend. And there'll be all, all manner of hands-on healing arts and um, private space within the beautiful teepees there for people to, to have one-on-one -on -one work, healing work. So it's really an opportunity to, if you're working through something, if you're coming into alignment with something, if you want some um, significant shifts and changes in your life, I think this container called the Ogden Ohm Festival will be an opportunity for you to experience a quickening um, of, of energy, a, a, a an evolution of consciousness for yourself because of the amazing energy that will be there. And I see it as a synergy. And that synergy is created because of all of the people that are there. Allie, wow. I, I love the Ohm Fest. I invite everybody to come to the Ohm Fest. It's, a, it's a, the time of your life. You don't want to miss it. And I would like to ask you if you could share with everybody here in live in our audience and if they're watching this video how what are the dates how they can what, you know with a website that can they can find out more about it and i also i've read your uh your mission statement for the ohm fest and your mission statement for the satya center so would you share some of that information with all of us I'd love to, thanks. So if, if you're interested in coming to the Ohm Fest, and I know that you are, um, it is on August the 19th, 20th, and 21st, 2016. And you can find out more information at OgdenOhmFest.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Ogden Ohm Fest. And we have an event page too, the third annual Ogden Ohm Fest. All the information's on there. If you're interested in being a speaker, a presenter, if you're a musician, we're still taking applications. If you'd like to be a vendor, and if you'd like to sponsor, we have all of those opportunities available. Um, so early bird tickets are on sale now until mid-July, so it's a considerable discount, and I encourage you to go and check that out. Um, so I have the... The mission statement of the Ohm Fest. I have to put my glasses on, excuse me. So the mission is to co-create community by bringing people together at our Oneness Festival, where community members share their gifts and talents for the purpose of uplifting and helping to empower individuals to unite in the common purpose of celebrating a world that works for all. And then you asked me, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've got a wonderful team. This is not just me. We've got 25 plus people uh, that are helping with this. It takes a lot to put on a big festival like this. Um, and so it, it, I wish I could, could tell you all of the names, um, but go on the website. You'll see everyone's face and read their bios. Uh, so you asked me to, to read a poem that I wrote. And um, I know that, that this is Grace on Fire, correct? And so I wrote this poem called Grounded in Grace. I wrote this about eight years ago. This is the moment I wish to change. My thoughts as I've known them, I'll rearrange. It's time to give up all control and reinvent my long played out role. Letting go of old stories and releasing the past, I experience a lightness of spirit at last. In this very moment, a new story I'll write. Me, the main character, full of grace, love, and light. Creating new boundaries and loving myself bring mental, physical, and spiritual health. I establish a serene and balanced pace and find myself deeply grounded in grace. Thank you, Allie. I absolutely positively want a copy of that poem. How profound is that? And you embody it, that that came straight from the depths of you, that you do embody that grace 
and you're living that grace. And that's such a beautiful poem, the process of that we're all going through. You're just a little ahead of some of us because we're, we're all letting go of those old stories that have held us back. We all got those stories. And thank you so much for sharing that poem, for sharing who you are, your extraordinary contribution to this world, to the community, your gifts, your own fest. You're also an artist. Is there somewhere, before we conclude, is there somewhere people can go and see your art? She's shown me some of her art, and it's magnificent. Is there somewhere they can go see your art? Well, I don't have a website at the moment, but all of my art is on Facebook. So you can check out Alice and Benjamin Artist and see some of my goddess art and my animal totems and my little mini series. And uh, thank you for, for mentioning that. Thank you. She's very multi-talented woman, Ali Benjamin. We are so honored to have you here. We are so honored to highlight you. I feel so honored. And, and I just am so grateful that you are here on this planet at this time, blessing our lives, blessing the world, raising the consciousness of the planet, awakening individuals one person at a time through all the mediums, your art, your art workshops, your poetry, your center Satya Center, your Om Fest, in so many ways you're reaching out into the world and transforming lives and awakening people. So you're making a powerful impact in this awakening process and this planet. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Let's all give a warm and gracious thank you to Ali Benjamin. <laughs> Welcome to Grace on Fire, Grace Speaks, Spontaneous Talks. I'm here out in Redmond Campground with the most astounding beings I could ever imagine. And we just interviewed Ali Benjamin. And what an honor and a privilege that was to, to interview such a powerful leader and as such an embodiment and expression of grace and love and light and awakened presence on this planet. Just so honored to have beings like her alive and working in divine order here on this planet. And she ended with a poem, Grounded in Grace. And it, I, I think my talk is just going to be a touch on a little of that. And I, I loved so much about it. I love the, the part where she said we're just letting go of our stories. Our stories. And I'm, I'm going to tell you an experience real quick. It was just a couple weeks ago. I remembered that I had, I had boxes of journals and I had to go through them. I had to get rid of them. It was there was out of state. And I had noticed I was on the top of the, the, the diary, I would criticize myself. I called myself names, not kind names. And I thought about this just two weeks ago. And what I had said in that diary was the exact same thing that somebody in my past told me, said to me, criticized me. And what hit home for me was that those, that self-criticism on my diaries was completely innocent. I was just repeating what I had been told as a little girl over and over as years. And I got to see the innocence of that. But I also got to see I do not have to keep doing that. I don't have to keep those stories, those old stories. The that the programming that I have, we're all programmed. We're programmed. There's a mass consciousness programming us. There's our families programming us. There's society programming us. There's our friends programming us. And some of this programming is good. And some of this programming is disempowering and limited. And I think we've all had a combination of both throughout our lives. And some have had worse than others. And we all have our stories. But we can surpass that. We can overcome that. We can let that go. That Ali's poem about letting go of the control and letting go of those old stories, those stories that limited us, that made us feel bad about ourselves, that made us feel sad and down and, and not good enough. I, the, clearly, I was not feeling good enough, inadequate. And in that, those were stories I was telling myself from a voice in the past that was not even my voice. I had taken on a voice from someone in my past, and I was living it inside my own head. 
and it was innocent. But I didn't need to continue doing that, and I don't need to continue that, and none of us need to continue doing that. We can take a stand, just like her poem said, and let that go and create a new story. I love that part of the poem. We create our new story today. What do we want to create today? What do our new stories want to create? When we let go of all those disempowering stories that, you know, and those people who told us those things, they're innocent too. They were doing the best they can or they were hurting inside. In my, in my case, it was, it was people hurting inside and, and not knowing where to vent that. And I just became that person to vent. And there was voices, of course, from people that were trying their best but didn't really know how to empower me. So maybe criticism was the way they thought I could be better, but their intention was well. But we're learning a new way to empower ourselves. We're ne- learning a new way. The entire planet is learning a new way of being. Parents are changing. Society is changing. And we're knowing that criticism does not work. Punishment does not. Blame fault does not work. That does not work. In the with past, that actually was a model that people thought worked. If we, if we shame them... If we let them know they're, they're bad and they've, made, they've, they've done something wrong, that, that we believed worked, but it doesn't work anymore. And we're doing it to ourselves if we were taught that and we can let it go and find a new way to empower ourselves. So the voices in our head, we can just claim, I am not going to listen to those voices. I am only going to listen to the unconditionally all-loving voice within me. The wide open, unstoppable, infinitely compassionate voice within me. That is the voice I will listen to. And that is the voice that will motivate me and inspire me and move me into the future as I create today the life I want to create. And we got smoke going on because we're at the camp out. We're having a great time. I hope you can come next year if you're watching this or tonight. I, we are surrounded by angels and masters and enlightened beings here, joyful spirits, and we're just celebrating life in a simple, spontaneous celebration here up at Redmond Campground. I love you. I love you all. I love you all, and thank you for coming. And may you have a beautiful and blessed day. Namaste. Thank you.